So as we continue uh, in our series, Gifted by Grace, uh, and, I, and I told you that I cannot, I cannot go on, uh, and I don't want to leave, that some of you cannot make it on Wednesday nights, and I understand that, so we're, we're going to have a little uh, teaching this morning, is that right? Amen. I'm, I'm bringing Wednesday Bible study to Sunday morning worship, Amen. is that okay? Amen. 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 So uh, we're going to start, and this is going to be uh, this is going to be the, the first part of spiritual gifts in their definitions. All right, uh, this is going to be the first part of spiritual gifts. Just turn this on because I don't know what's going on with this. George, give me the handheld. Uh, hear some some noise up here through the uh, headset. All right, so uh, spiritual gift definition. This is part one. So if you will remember. In lesson number, uh, lesson number six, we talked about uh, discover your spiritual gifts, Amen. all right? Mm -hmm. And for you and I to discover what our spiritual gift is, I, I told you that what you must first do is pray. Yeah, right. In order for you to discover what your spiritual gift is, it's just to simply ask God, Father, what is my spiritual gift. Reveal to me what my spiritual gift is so I can use it for your glory. All right? So the first thing you got to ask yourself is, you know, okay, what's my gift? And then pray and ask the Lord, reveal to me what my gift is. Now, here, here I want you to understand, beloved, that don't you dare think that you are not gifted in some area in your life. Each and every one of us that are in the body of Christ, every person that is a part of the body of Christ has a spiritual gift. All right? When Listen, when God created you, when God created you, he placed within you and he equipped you with exactly what you needed to fulfill the mission that he has for you for the kingdom of God. Each and every one of us, each and every one of us that has named Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior has been equipped and has been gifted with spiritual gifting so we can be a benefit to the kingdom of God and to ultimately bring glory to his name. Are you understanding this this morning? So, so you, you got to understand something. Let, 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 me, let me help you understand. Um, um, for those of you that don't know, uh, Elder Wondrix was blessed with a, a brand new, well, not brand, but brand new to her, a brand new Cadillac. So when y'all get after service, y'all go out there and check out that Cadillac. That Cadillac is sharp. That Cadillac is sharp. So her husband blessed her with a brand new Cadillac. Now, 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 mind you, uh, uh, Darren, this is this not one of my old school Fleetwoods. Now, this is new model stuff, all right? And y'all know how vehicles are today. They got all the bells and whistles in them. Uh, Dr. Stanley, they, get, they got Bluetooth stuff. They got all kind of stuff that's going on inside of them. And the manufacturer, get me, the manufacturer put all these things inside of it, right? Now, it would do her no good. Now, now, Dick and Sam, Watch this. Dick and Sam may know how to operate all the bells and the whistles, and he may be able to tell her some of how the thing operates, but for the best results, for her to know how to operate everything in the car, is for her to do what? To read the owner's manual for herself. Yeah. See, see, Dick and Sam, although he got the car for her, can tell her what's going on, but it's best for her to go and read the manual for herself because there might be some things that he don't even know that's going on. Are you talking to me this morning? So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that God has equipped you with everything you need to function in this spiritual life, but you yourself have to go to the manual. You got to go to the Word of God for yourself to get instruction on how to operate the gifts that are within you. Amen. Amen. Teach Holy Spirit. Let me help you. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through 11, and then we're going to go to verse 27 and verse 31. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about the special abilities the Spirit gives us, I don't want you to misunderstand this you know that when you were still pagans you were led astray and swept along in worshiping speechless idols so I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus and no one can say Jesus is Lord except 
by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift, get this, is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another Spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. So here it is, the Holy Spirit knows what gift that you ought to have. And he's going to give you the ability and the power to operate within that gift. To, uh, can I say it again? To operate within that gift. To operate within the gift that has been given to you. I've been saying this on Wednesday night. Listen, you got to learn how to stay in your lane. Uh-huh. When God has given you a specific gift to operate in the body of Christ, it is there, first of all, given for you to be able to help someone in the body of Christ. All right? Don't try to flip-flop gifts if you're not, if you're not able to operate in another gift. If Deacon Pharrell has a gift of help, and I know he does, it does him no good to try to switch lanes and jump into the lane of administration where his wife is, because then they're going to collide. That's right. That's right. Amen. Too often times, there are too many accidents or incidents in the body of Christ because people don't stay in their spiritual lanes. Oh, y'all looking at me kind of funny. Verse 27, here we go. All of you together are Christ's body, and each one of you is a part of it. Here are some of the parts God has appointed for the church. First are apostles. Second are prophets. Third are teachers. Then those who do miracles. Those who have the gift of healing. Those who can help others. Those who have the gift of leadership. Those who speak in unknown languages. Are we all apostles? Are we all prophets? Are we all teachers? Do we all have the power to do miracles? Do we all have the gift of healing? Do we all have the ability to speak in unknown languages? Do we all have the ability to interpret another, uh, unknown languages? Of course not. In other words, he's saying it just what I just said. Stay in your lane. That's right. Whatever gift the Holy Spirit has given to you, you operate in that gift. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So look at what he says in verse 31. So you should earnestly desire the most helpful gift. But now let us show you a way of life that is the best of all. Now, let me help you understand this. And I, I don't have the notes for this, Jordan, so just, just go along with me. When you talk about the most helpful gifts, understand that there is there's no one gift greater than the other. Paul is in that on the know. So when you talk about the greatest gift, if you're going to do anything when you have these gifts, and when you begin to read in chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, the greatest gift that you have to have when you're operating in your spiritual gift is the gift of love. Because Paul says, listen, you can have all these gifts, you can speak in unknown tongues, you can do all these things, but if you don't have love, he said, you're just making a whole bunch of noise. Alright? So if you don't have anything, if you want to desire to have anything, neighbors, have love one for another. Alright, so, 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 let me get off there. Come on. So, so here we are. We're talking about discovering, we're talking about discovering your gift, your spiritual gift, and we know that in, to discover your spiritual gift, that you, first of all, you got to pray, all right? But also in that same lesson that we were talking about, we said that you, in, in lesson six, you had to do what? You had to do some investigation. All right? If you remember, you had to do some investigation. And, and today, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Today and over the next few weeks, amen, Elder Wanda, she's going to preach fourth Sunday. I'm telling her right now. I didn't tell her yet. So, so she know right now that you're going to preach fourth Sunday. So I'm going to let you go. We, after that, we're going to go right back into the definition of these gifts. All right? So don't y'all stay home on fourth Sunday. Hallelujah. Y'all come, come and support the woman of God. Uh, we're going to come back with this lesson. But for the next, however long the Holy Spirit says, we're going to talk about the definitions of spiritual gifts. All right? 
Uh, so, so we know we got to know the functions of them and helping, helping, helping you to uh, discover what your gift is and to be able to identify um, with whatever your spiritual gift is. You, beloved, first of all, uh, you got you got to search the scriptures. Mm -hmm. You have to search the scriptures. You have to search the scriptures. All right. And listen, that doesn't mean for you to get it on Sunday morning. That doesn't mean for you to get it on Wednesday night. That means that when you leave here on tonight or this afternoon, amen, that means that you need to go home in this word. As the Holy Spirit has revealed to you whatever your spiritual gift is, now you need to be, now you need to be doing what? You need to be investigating through the scriptures how you can operate in your spiritual gift, okay? So there are a few gifts. There are a few gifts I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get through on this morning, all right? I can't go through all of them. Uh, we, there, 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 there are more, there are about 20 some odd gifts that I want to go over with you. All right, but just today, if I have enough time, George, keep me keep me honest on my time. I'm gonna go with three gifts with you this morning. All right, three gifts, three gifts, just today, just on today. And the first gift we want to talk about is the spiritual gift of faith. All right, the spiritual gift of faith, faith, the spiritual gift of faith. Now, I want you to understand something. Don't be can don't don't get confused with the spiritual gift of faith with saving faith. There's a spiritual gift of faith. All right, and then there's saving faith. All of us that are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ have saving faith, but not all of us receive the special gift of faith. Y'all looking at me kind of crazy. Listen, listen. Now, here it is. Jordan, here we go. When we look at the word faith, the word faith in the New Testament in the Greek language is, comes from the word pistis, all right? And it carries the, the, the notation of confidence, a certainty, a trust, and an assurance in the object of faith. All right? So when we look at, when we look at, first of all, when we look at, let me help you understand what the saving faith is in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. All right? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved, what? Through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So that is your saving faith. All right? You believe in Christ, you come and you say what? Through faith. Are you understanding? Amen. All right? So that is your saving faith. So when we talk about spiritual gift of faith, all right? The gift of faith is rooted in one saving faith in Christ and the trust that comes through a close relationship with the Savior. So you have to have an operate to operate in the special, special gift or the spiritual gift of faith. There has to be a relationship that you have with Jesus Christ. Amen. Those with this gift have a trust and a confidence in God that allows them to live boldly for him. See, some of us can have, we can have saving faith, but we don't have that faith enough to believe God to move mountains in our lives. I'm glad y'all listening. Yes, mm -hmm. when, we, when we look at this, this gift of faith, in the Bible, the gift of faith is often accompanied by great works of faith. All right? Let's look at Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verse 1 and verse through verse 10 in the New Living's translation. Watch this. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. Here we go, watch this. See, uh, the, the lame man looked at them eagerly expecting some money. Let me stop right there real quick. First of all, here it is. This man, Brandon, mm -hmm. has been lame from birth. Mm -hmm. And people have been bringing him just to the gate of the temple and not taking him inside the temple. Mm -hmm. Isn't it something how you and I can come inside the house and get the healing that we need? but we won't bring nobody else inside to get the healing that they need. Wow. Wow. I don't know about you, but I don't want nobody in my life that's going to leave me on the outside Amen. while they go on the inside and get what they need. If you're getting what you need, bring 
bring me with you so I can get what you get. Amen, somebody. Because if you can walk healed, set free, and delivered, I want to walk healed, set free, and delivered. So watch this, watch this, watch this. Really, that means I need to connect myself with some people that love God as much as they love me and want, want the best for my life. Talk to me, somebody. Yes, yes. See, oh, oh my gosh. See, because you, you got to be careful, and I said this before, and I said it again. I said, you got to be careful mm -hmm. who you allow to wear the tag of friend. Mm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I was sharing, I was sharing, I was sharing with Brandon. Just the other day, how how uh, I take time periodically to do a purging in my cell phone. What are you talking about, Pastor? Uh, uh, most of our, our phones, these smartphones, Dig and Pharrell, <laughs> they operate quicker when you don't have a lot of stuff interfering with the megabytes mm. uh, it slows them down so you got a lot of apps and all this other stuff that slows them down but the more thing the more uh, well what slows them down mostly if you begin to look at your contact information mm -hmm. so you can delete some apps and that'll give you some more speed or some more megabytes if you will Amen. but I guarantee you if you go in and delete some of your contacts you'll d discover how quicker your phone will operate. That's right. So what I do from time to time is I go in and I delete some people, Deja, mm -hmm. because they're taking up space and it's causing my phone to slow down. Uh -oh. Y'all missing? Mm -hmm. See, what you need to do in your own spiritual life is delete some folk out of your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And you wonder why you're being sluggish in your spiritual walk. Amen. Because you got to get rid of some folk. Amen, somebody. Amen. That don't mean you don't need to, you don't, don't stop, that you stop loving them, but that means you need to, you, uh, uh, listen. Yes. Mm, help me, Holy Spirit. Mm. Have you ever had in your life where God has taken some folk away from you? And you wonder why they're not in your life no more, but you're at more peace and you have more happiness and joy than you ever had? than when they were around. Yes. Talk to me somebody. Amen. Amen. And then for some reason, in, in your own intellect, you want to just reach out to them. Mm -hmm. And you call them. And after you call them and talk to them, and folk don't call nobody anymore, so you text them and do whatever. <laughs> and after, after you finish communicating with them, you wish you hadn't reached out. Amen. It's a reason why the Lord placed them and took them out of your life. Amen. Amen. Whew. Can, I, can I share something with you? There are some people, Dr. Stanley, that are meant to come in your life, and there are some people that are meant to come in your life that cannot stay. But then there are some people that are coming in your life that rushes, they cannot leave. Don't get the ones, don't get them confused. The ones that can't stay, let them go. Don't try to keep them around. Amen. And the ones that can't go, stop trying to kick them out. All right. See, you're trying to get rid of the wrong folk. <laughs> Help me somebody. Amen. <laughs> Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, look on us. <clears throat> the lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you. Here, 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 here comes the, the gift of faith, all right? But I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus, the Nazarene, get up and walk. See, Peter said, listen, I ain't got no money. But what I got, what I have, I'm going to give to you. I'm going to give you the faith that I know, and I believe in Jesus Christ, that will give to you far more anything that I can ever give. Get up and walk. And look at what happened. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking and leaping and praising God, he went into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. And when they realized he was the lame beggar they, that they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astonished. It was the faith of Peter. That's the kind of faith 
when you talk about having the gift, the spiritual gift of faith. It's that kind of faith. When's the last time you were able to go to somebody and tell them to get up and walk? Come out of the situation that you're in because you know and you believe God. Because listen, he's done so many things for you in your life. So I got that, I got it. You, you got enough faith to believe in God. That listen, if he's did it for me, I know he'll do it for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you ever, I'm going to touch home for a minute. Have you ever been in a financial street? I know all of y'all got, y'all doing well. I know, I know everybody, everybody. Ain't nobody calling your house. Amen. 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 Y'all, ain't none of y'all looking at the caller ID. I know everybody, I think but I done been in some situation. Amen. Amen. Have you ever, can I just be personal for a minute and I say, have you ever had a car yes. repossessed? Yes. And, and listen, I'm not talking about deja, I ain't talking about, about surprise either. I'm talking about looking at the man, hook your stuff up. And driving, I'm not talking about you coming out the next morning and thinking somebody stole your stuff. No, 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 I'm talking about looking at it, ain't nothing you can do. But because you got faith in God, that's all right. Take it because I got something else coming. Yes. Amen. That's right. And watch. I, I don't want. I don't want you to get the wrong idea because you still have to pay your bills. That's right. That's right. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand. I ain't talking. Y'all go ahead and take it there. No, no, no. That, that you still need to take care of your business. Amen. Oh no, man, nothing. Amen. Amen. That means GMAC. That means whoever your financial company is, you still need to pay your bill, Amen. whether they repossess it or not. Yeah. But you got to have faith in God. Okay, okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I, this is, I, I messed up on this one. All right? I, I wasn't a good steward of what you're giving me. So I'm not complaining that they took it. But Father, right now, I have faith as a grain of a mustard seed that I'm going to come up for this thing. I'm going to rise up. Amen. Because I done been there. Amen. I done been there. I tell you all the time, me and my, me and my wife and my children, we were riding around in a Ford LTD station wagon, four door with a wood panel on the side. After, after getting out something brand new, but it's okay. It's all right. Because I've learned, and you ought to learn, and I have faith. That's why I can tell anybody, listen, if you just trust in God, be faithful, be faithful, be faithful. And he certainly will bless you. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit, let me, let me finish it. The Holy Spirit distributes this gift of faith to some in the church to encourage, get this, and build up the church in her confidence in God. Those with the spiritual gift of faith trust God. Trust that God is sovereign and that he is good. They take him at his word and put all the full weight of their lives in his hand. They expect God to move and are not surprised when he answers a prayer uh, or performs a miracle. Amen. That's what's having the spiritual gift of faith is. All right? So those of you that have that spiritual gift of, gift of faith, I mean, you need to start operating in it. Amen? Start encouraging others in the body of Christ to have confidence in God. If you got confidence in him, if you know he will do for you what no other can do, then share that gift with your brothers and sisters in Christ. All right? I'm teaching this morning. I'm teaching. Amen. I'm teaching. All right? Amen. All right? So, spiritual gift of faith. The next one. The next one is serving or ministering. Serving or ministering. I, I, this, gift, this gift is prevalent in the body. This gift is prevalent. Deacon Pharrell. Uh, brother Brandon, oh man, you talk about servers and helpers. I'm going to show you what it means. I'm going to show you what it means. The spiritual gift of serving or ministry covers a wide range of activities in its application. Now, when you look at this, 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 this word, there are two Greek words for this gift, all right? Uh, and, and the reason, I, listen, the reason why I'm giving you the Greek definition because it is not always the same in our English language, all right? So you need to know what the word actually means from its original text. All right. So in the Hebrew language, we understand that we are, excuse me, from the Old Testament scripture, we're looking at the Hebrew language. All right. In New Testament scripture, we're looking at Greek language. All right. So I'm going to give you the Greek enunciation and its definition. All right. I don't speak Greek. So don't y'all get mad at me if I pronounce, enunciate these words not in its correct enunciation. Dr. Stanley going to help me out. She's the English professor. Hallelujah. So. <laughs> uh, the first word that's found uh, when we talk about uh, serving uh, or ministering is uh, diakonana. You got that? Y'all see it up there? It's on the screen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you.
Thank God for met, uh, modern technology. And the basic meaning for this word, beloved, is to wait on tables. All right, to wait on tables. And it refers to any act of service done in genuine love for the edification of the community. All right? So when we look at Romans chapter 12, verse 6 and verse 7, in the New Living Translation, the Word of God reads, In His grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, hear this, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach them well. But y'all see this? If your gift is serving others, do what? Serve them what? Serve them well. Serve them well. The second word, uh, or this Greek word for uh, service or ministering, it comes from the word or uh, 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 antiliptus. Are we there? Yes, yes. A antiliptus. And it gives us the word of helps or helping. All right? It's, it's, it has a similar meaning uh, as uh, the first Greek word, but to help or to aid and love within the community. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in verse 28, again from the New Living Translation, here are some of the parts God has appointed for the church. First are apostles, second are prophets, third are teachers, then those who do miracles, those who, get, who have the gift of healing, those who can what? Help others. Those who have the gift of leadership, those who speak in unknown tongues. All right? Now, those that have the gift of, of serving or, or ministry, all right, the Holy Spirit endows some believers with this gift to fill the many gaps of ministry and to meet the needs of the church as it is as it is to fulfill its great commission and the goal is to energize the church and free up others to use their gift to the fullest so those that have uh, <coughs> the gift of serving or ministering all right um, we know that they they are uh, those that help and they help to free up those of us that are doing work for the kingdom of God let me show you what I'm talking about in Acts chapter 6 verse 1 through verse 7, all right? Acts chapter 6, verse 1 through verse 7. From New Living Translation. But as the believers rapidly multiplied, there were rumblings of discontent. The Greek-speaking believers complained about the Hebrew-speaking believers, saying that their widows were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve called a meeting of all the believers. They said, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running a food program. And so, brothers, select seven men who are well respected and are full of the spirit and wisdom. We will give them this responsibility. All right? So here it is. The apostles are saying, listen, our job is to minister the word of God. Okay, so those you need to pick out some people that can take care of this business. All right, that's in the body of Christ because they're going to help those that are in need, but they're also helping us so we can continue to do the work of the kingdom of God. Yes, sir. All right, so that's why. Let me stop here for a minute. So that's why I depend on a brother Brandon. That's why I depend on a deacon Richard Pharrell. That's why I depend on a, a deacon Sam Wines because of their gifting of help. Because they free me up to do what I need to do, which is to minister, to teach, and to preach the word of God. And can I just say this? When they do it, they don't do it with no grumbling. If you're going to operate in your spiritual gift, first of all, stop complaining. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Don't complain. Whenever I call one of these brothers, Pastor, no problem, we got it done. If I call one and he can't do it, he'll call another. If he can't do it, they'll call and they'll work it out together. So what? I can continue to do what I'm supposed to be doing. That's right. That's right. This had listen. It don't, that don't mean brother, brother Brandon, brother Brandon. He don't wear no title. Amen. Amen. He just brother Brandon. I don't even have to call him deacon. He just who? He's a servant. That's right. Amen. Sam, a servant, ministering service and helps to the body of Christ. Amen. 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 I'm trying to move on. Keep catching me with my time. I said this on Wednesday night. We, as a community, and a black community, especially in our black churches, we are the ones, I believe, we have an identity crisis. Yep. We are the only ones I believe. I believe, listen, if we ain't called with a title, we just won't do nothing. 
Amen, somebody. Amen. I shared this story. I shared this story. I was having a conversation with a gentleman, uh, uh, and, and I, I didn't know who he was. I was having a conversation with a gentleman, and we were talking spiritual things. And I thought he was a pastor just like I was a pastor. So after we got finished talking, he got finished sharing with me what he wanted to share with me. He, he began to walk off. But then I thought about what he said, so I had some more questions. I said, Pastor, Pastor, he kept on walking. He kept on walking. Later on in that day, I found out that he was a bishop. So you're not going to answer me because I call pastor and not bishop? I'm not trying to discredit who you are, but why do we always get hung up? Could I just say, hey, brother? Maybe he would have turned around. We get hung up on titles throughout the history of the black community church. First, we were reverends. Now we got away from reverends. Now we're bishops. Don't, 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 don't misunderstand me. Those of you that are watching, I'm not trying to discredit your office and your ability in the body of Christ, but we are so hung up on titles, it's ridiculous. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, if you're not bishop, you want to be called an apostle. Mm -hmm. Whatever we happen to call a child of God. Right. Amen. 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 Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't bust nobody's bubble. I didn't mean to offend nobody. If I offended you, I'm sorry. But that's just how it is. We we got we got man. We got to stop. Just we want to be up here so bad. But the greatest of those that are servants are the one that serve you. Amen. 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 When's the last time you humbly hey hey? When's the last time y'all gotta get that camera? When's the last time you humbly wash somebody's feet? As the scripture says, Jesus gave us an example. But we always want somebody to do something for us, James, but we don't want to do nobody, nothing for the body of Christ. That's right. mm -hmm. Amen. If you're going to operate in this spiritual gifting of help, that's what you have to do. You have to do it in love yes. and earnestly. Yes. And any of the gifts, you have to first of all do them and operate it in the spirit of love. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. mm -hmm. Amen. But when it comes to the gift of help, man, everybody can't help because you can't, you know, just be honest. <laughs> I can, I can call on Marcel to, to help me do something, but, you know, can I really call on everybody? Thank you. Mm -hmm. No. Amen. I said, I said, I said a couple, couple, uh, if, if I needed, if I needed a hundred dollars, I can go to Marcel. I started looking at me crazy. <laughs> but I know if Marcel had a hundred on her, she'd give it to me. Amen. And I guarantee you, watch this, not, not watch this. Not because I'm pastor, but because of her love. She'll give it. That's right. Amen. Mm. Come on. Let me finish. Let me give you the scripture. I'm, I'm trying. I'm really. I'm really. In verse number five, everyone like this idea, and they chose the following. Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit. Philip, uh, Mercurius, Achanor, Timian, uh, Arminius, Nicholas of Antioch, an earlier convert to the Jewish faith. These seven were presented to the apostles who prayed for them as they laid their hands on them. So God's message continued to spread. The number of believers greatly increased in Jerusalem, and many of the Jewish priests were converted, uh, they were converted too. And all this took place, why? Because of these seven men that were chosen out to help the apostles so they can continue to do the work of the ministry by teaching and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they stepped in to help out with the situation that was going on in the body. Amen. Amen. Those with the gift of serving or ministry, they do not seek recognition or position in the spotlight. They just love to help. They are content with serving in the background, knowing that their contribution will bless the church, display the love of Christ to the world, and bring glory to God. How many of you in the body have the gift of helps this morning? All right, the last one, and I promise I'm, I'm going to be for this gift of administration. Gift of administration, all right? Gift of administration. Uh, this word, this Greek word of the spiritual gift of administration, uh, it's, it's pronounced Cubar Nises. Help me, Lord. 
That's, that's my limited uh, enunciation of the Greek word. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to try to fake it. But what it is, it, it is the unique term that refers to a shipmaster or a captain. All right? It literally means to steer or to rule or to govern. All right? So this, this gift of administration, it carries the idea of someone who guides and directs a group of people toward a goal or, or, or destination. Everybody can't be an administrator. All right. Amen. Amen. For someone to be, for you to have and to operate in the spiritual gift of administration, you have to be well organized. Yes, right. Amen. You have to be well organized. I thank God. I hope you're still watching Deacon S. Pharrell. She is the epitome of an administrator. Amen. Deacon S. Pharrell is the epitome of an administrator. Amen. Amen. I will say it again. I will say it until the cows come home. Deacon S. Pharrell is the epitome of an administrator. When you talk about organizing, when you talk about making sure things, every, all the all the eyes are dotted, all the T's are does that? She's not always perfect. Don't get me wrong, but she operates in that spiritual gifting of administration. Right. Amen. A lot of things that take place in the body. Get, hit, hit it. She also helps me because a lot of things that that goes on, I don't have to worry about because she has a gift that operates in administration. By the time it's all said and done, when she comes and lets me know, all right, this all already went down, already went down, Pastor, but it's already taken care of. Amen. 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 All right. Man, it, see, because some of you that have been with me for 16 years, you know that if I say, watch this, James, if I say I want something done, I mean I wanted it done last week. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he knows. He knows. If I say I want something done, I'm not saying it like tomorrow. He knows. I've, I've already wanted it done. All right? So everybody can't be an administrator. Especially when you have someone like me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But when you operate in that gift of love, yes, and we're working right. together That's right. for the kingdom of God. Yes. Amen. It all works out. It all works out. Let me give you this last scripture. Luke chapter 14, verse 28 to 30, for the New Living Translation. But don't begin until you count the cost. Watch this. Amen. For who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost? to see if there is enough money to finish it. Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of money, and then everyone would laugh at you. They would say, there's, a, there's, there's the person who started that building and couldn't afford to finish it. An administrator ain't gonna start a task without knowing how it's gonna end up being done. A good administrator is gonna already have the plan mapped out. Because they're being, watch this, they're doing kingdom, especially when you're doing kingdom business. We can't, we can't, how is it that we can operate on our, on our secular jobs with the spirit of excellency, but then when we come to the household of God, right. we want to do things haphazard. Yeah, mm. right. Some of you work in places where you, 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 you are the person in charge. I'm going to put it like that. And you work things out on your job, but when it comes to the house of God, you want to come and give it whole half, half hazard. No, you can't do it that way. When you come to the house of God, you got to make sure when, you, when it comes to this spiritual gift of administration, you got to make sure things are done right for the glory of God. Amen. 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 I pray that you guys got this. this yep. It's only going to get better. I'm sorry. It's only going to get better. Amen. If I put you to sleep, oh, well, you're you going to have to wake up. Is this going to go on for the next? I need. Listen, I'm saying this here. Here I go, guys. I need for the body of Christ. I, I've said this time and time again. We got to get ready. God is preparing this house. He's preparing this house. And he's preparing us in such a way that we have to know how to operate in our own spiritual gift. Because he's about, watch this, the harvest is about to come in. And when the harvest comes in, we got to know how to handle those people that come into this house. They're going to be people that come in here that's hurting. They're going to be people that's coming here that's destitute. All right, we, you have to know how to operate in your gift. Amen. Whether it's the gift of faith, whether it's the gift of healing, whether it's the gift of miracles, it's in this house. I've been saying that everything that God wants done is in this house. Every gift is in this house. So it's my job as a pastor and as your teacher to make sure that we all get it. Mm -hmm. Amen. We got to all get it. Let me give this real quick. Thank you so much for taking the time to share with us. I, I pray that this message and these, these lessons this teaching today has blessed you. Thank you again for sharing with us, and I pray uh, that you come back 
week after week after week. If we haven't touched on your gift on today, uh, prayerfully the Lord say the same. Come back on next week. Amen. We're, we'll be in the same uh, uh, atmosphere, if you will, a mode of teaching uh, to try to help you to identify and discover so you can walk in your spiritual gifting as you uh, endeavor to um, fulfill your mission in the body of Christ. Again, I take the time. Take, thank you for taking the time to share with us on our live stream this morning. So I pray that you have a prosperous, productive, and powerful day. If you're not busy, join us again uh, this afternoon at 2.30 for our live stream as we continue our celebration uh, for the 16th church anniversary. Have a prosperous, productive, and powerful day. And always remember to fully rely yeah. on God.